So the folks at Troll VFX have just recently released True Theory in version 5. Now we did talk about the cool things that you can do with this when the Blender Market sale were happening and it's quite interesting to see that this is now a new generation of terrain creation in Blender as this allows you to procedurally create your terrain with multiple set of things that allows you that freedom of creation exactly how you want it. And for those who like to get on with this and possibly you'd like to get started with it, then you can simply go over to the link in the description that'll bring you right here where you can get started with it. There's also a coupon code in the description for those who like to get this for a specific discount and this is going to be running for a specific time as well. And with that said, let's dive right into Blender and see how this works. So, with Blender simply open up right here, how you get to work with this is very simple. As all you need to do is go over to edit, go over to preference, go all the way to add-ons and right now with Blender, you need to click on the tiny drop down, click on install from disk and you need to navigate to where you have add-on downloaded and you can install it. And once you install this, this would require a couple of things as the installation process requires you to install individual packs one after the other from the materials all the way to the height map down to the asset starter pack and terrain elements. And once all of these are fully installed, you can now proceed to hit on the bugger menu and save your preference. Something else that you may need to do is go over to the procedural section, click on the tiny drop down and click on load items. And this is going to load procedural shaders that you need. Of course, you can simply go through the textures, the object, the packs, just to see that everything works. And once you're okay with that, you can go ahead, hit the bugger menu, save your preference and get started. And to get started, it's very simple, as all you need to do is tap in on the keyboard, go over to True VFX, and if you did purchase this during the Black Friday sale, you should have True Terrain version 5 and also True Sky. Of course, we'll talk about True Sky in a bit, but for you to start creating your terrains, it's very simple. Let's get rid of the default cube and click on Create Terrain to get started. By default, this is going to offer you a couple of presets which you can use to build your scenes. So if you like to rely on presets to get things done faster, of course you can simply go ahead and take advantage of that. As the presets will definitely allow you create faster and you can layer as many of the presets that you like to work with and get the result that you want. For those who like to build from scratch and possibly work with a couple of parameters to get things going, what you need to do is to click on OK. And once you do that, this gives you a plain thing that you can start working with. However, it's not so plain because automatically it adds a terrain noise and the terrain noise that you have here has parameters that you can work with, which includes the noise, the height, and also the transform. So with the height, you can simply raise this up, bring this down, depending on what you want. You might probably also notice a red box right here. And of course, there's also a blue curve. The blue curve is for you to be able to rotate this and the red box is for you to be able to transform this however you choose. Now the transformation is only on this specific layer. Depending on the number of layers that you have, you do have those options and you'd also notice that you also have an interesting option for opacity. So you can blend things, work with modifiers and get things going. For the noise section, there's a couple of noises that you can play with. Say maybe you like to have some magic noise. Probably you like to move this, move it backwards, move it forward. You might want to add another noise. So we can add another noise right here. Click on OK. And this again is a plain noise. So we can have that and we can drop the noise opacity a little bit like so and move this to a point. And you now notice that we are mixing these two together. So we can take that off, bring this in, take that off, bring this in. We can also bring this down and you can see what we're trying to make. So this is one cool thing that you can do. However, within the noise section, there are also presets that you can work with. So if we click on the plus section, go over to the noise, take a look at this preset. You like to get some hills, okay. Rocky stuff, okay. Mountain, perfect. Select any of the ones that you want, go ahead, click on okay, and that is gonna bring that right in. If you want to scale it down, you can. So you can scale this down if you choose, and you can mix and match stuff together. Again, wherever this exists within the layer and the amount of opacity that it has actually influences the overall result. And this is not the only way that you can make stuff. Let's go ahead and turn all this off and talk about some more. So if you click on this plus sign, go over to the height section, you also notice that you've got some predefined heights that you can use. Maybe you would like to throw in the, you know, true VFX mounting O2. Maybe you want to have that. You can click on OK. And this also gives you an interesting option where you can move this however you choose. By the way, if you like to scale this entire landscape, you can. So we can go over to the size section and crank this up, okay? You wanna make it bigger, go ahead and do that. You wanna make it smaller, go ahead and do that and get this going. So we can do that as well and the same principle apply. 
We can reduce this size if we want, drop down the opacity if we want, move this around, position that, add some more stuff, you know, just kit bash these things however you think it best suits what you're trying to create. In some instances, when you're working with a height map, you can also choose to repeat this height maps however you want. Let me show you guys what I mean. So if we go ahead and turn all of this off, and we'll probably want to repeat this, let's drop the size to about 500, drop it down there, go over to where you have your extension, click on repeat, and this starts repeating. And this is definitely going to be super useful for a lot of things. There's also situations where you can just go ahead and extend this, and you can have more of an extension. You can also choose to keep this as mirror, to get that sort of repeat like style stuff and you know move this however you want but for our case we can keep this as clip and we can also clip the outside height so you notice we've got this height outside here we can clip them let's turn this off so we can see this clearly so we can clip them by simply cranking this to a desirable position so we can get that there and we can also go ahead and clip these other parts as well you know get something that works for you and you have that going on so you can now pick this move this around add the other ones again and get some very cool results going for you and all we've just explored is how you can use the layer types so you can play with textures as well if you want click right here there's a ton of textures that you can use create whatever you want click right here as well go to the play tool there's also a couple of play tools that you can work with and these layer types alongside the other presets that we mentioned earlier can be used to make amazing looking landscapes and you can just simply mix and match these things together let me show you what i mean if you click on this button you also have presets so to these presets that we're just launching what these presets are are a combination of all of those layers that we've mentioned so you notice all of these layer types that we've mentioned they now exist as simple presets, which means you can select any of these and you can make your very own changes to any of these layers, or you can load them in as individual presets. So we can click, go over here. Let's say we'd like to get that nice one that is called the smile. So we can go ahead and get that, click on apply, and that brings in the whole collection. So you don't necessarily need to start making these things yourself. You can now have this and mix it alongside some of the things that you've worked on before and possibly play with your opacity to get a nicer looking result. Of course, for those who like to just see what the camera sees, possibly you don't want to render the other part, you can use the camera calling and this is definitely going to see only what the camera sees. On the other hand, you can also go over up here and you can set this to resolution adaptive and this is going to come with the camera calling and if we simply jump out of the camera view you would notice that the camera is only rendering high quality resolution only where it sees you can add this alongside camera calling to kind of save on performance especially when you're trying to do some stuff but in most cases i'm just going to go ahead and let this one be as we would like to just get a flat out resolution across the whole scene this resolution can be cranked up and brought down and you can work alongside the viewport amount. I would love to advise that you balance both performance and quality when working within your viewport and you can let loose when you're trying to render. And for those who like to add erosions, you can simply scroll all the way down and you can turn on erosion. And again, this is totally dependent on what you're trying to make. There's also a few more things right here, which I think might be useful. The blending option also comes with a couple of masks and also mask modifiers that you can use. There's also modifiers that you can use to do some modification to your terrain. So these things are very procedural the way they work and it is quite interesting what you can now make with it. Truth Training version 5 comes with a couple of water tools and presets that you can work with. So if we go ahead and click on add water, we can simply add water. We can either make this as a separate object or we can simply leave this the way it is and we can proceed to select the kind of water feature that we would like to work with. So if we click on lake and click on OK, this is going to add a simple lake to our scene. You can use the eyedropper from the position tool to position this lake exactly where you want it to be. We can also click and say maybe we'd like it to be somewhere like here. And you can notice that. So we might also want to just make this leg go down to a point like so, and we can keep it that way. Setting instances might also require you to use the slider to sort of slide things down. And in most cases, you might also want to turn on the use depth, which is going to block out some of these parts right there. This is quite similar to what you have with the ocean tool. So if we click and select the ocean, we can also go ahead and add an ocean to our scene. So let's go ahead and turn this off and turn on the ocean 
and with the ocean tool we can add the depth and play with the height to sort of get the exact height of what we are trying to make and because this tool is fully procedural we can go over to the terrain section at any point in time and make changes to the terrain and this would automatically adjust to accommodate for all of those changes now to define rivers or to simply draw out rivers is very easy as this requires you to go over to the plus sign where you can add water and click on add river and once we add the river the next thing we need to do to start defining the river part is to simply click on the draw tool or if you have a curve you can link that curve there if you don't have one clicking on the draw tool would offer you an option to draw out the river how you want it to flow and once we have that and we simply go ahead and take a look you would now see that we've got our river flowing exactly how we want it to different water bodies have different parameters and it is worth mentioning that you have to confirm which affects your terrain the way you want as with the lake tool you can also choose how you like the lake to be represented in your scene in certain cases you might want to simply use an object to control the position of the lake body in different parts of your terrain and that is an option that is also available so instead of using position you can use object play with the shoreline the height the width fall off amount and get the exact result that you're going for you can choose to create different variations of lake and use them accordingly there's also the very interesting simulation which kind of simulates rainfall across your entire model so if you like to have water simulation across your terrain then this is also something that you can simply rely on and get that happening with lots of customization features that also applies to this users can now create even more interesting stuff it is also worth mentioning that the ocean tool has a couple of interesting looking presets which artists can walk around and get desirable results and just like we mentioned for other presets these are highly customizable and you can rely on this to get going and for customization and animation you can simply switch the waves from static to animation at the same time you can also make changes to the waves and also setting parameters by switching from geometry to surface where you can make changes to the wave the foam and also the shader parameters and true terrain doesn't come only with terrain water it also shows up with some scattering tools which you can use to scatter vegetations across your scene true terrain version 5 ships with some very interesting scattering tools and to create your scatters is very simple as all you need to do is switch over to the scatter section within the true terrain version 5 panel and click on create scatter system you can choose to click on ok to work with the default or you can select any of the scattering options that exist right here in this instance we're going to click on bushy forest and we can click on ok to load the bushy forest across our entire terrain and just like every other scattering tool these now scatters everywhere you can choose to play with the scattering amount the viewport amount and a couple of other parameters right here for the scattering amount we can set this all the way to two just to make sure that we have enough in the scene and we can also proceed to add more stuff and just like with the terrain panel and water panel we can layer these however we want in this case we can also say we'll like to drop the viewport count to save on performance and you can choose to turn on or turn off any of the layers there's something that's pretty interesting that you may have noticed if you take a look at all of the scatters that we have some are scattering right inside of the water and this is something that we don't want and to mitigate that what we need to do is to simply go over to the preset that we're working with click on mask click right here where you have your plus sign and we can use the attribute mask so once we click on the attribute mask we can decide we we'll like this to just be scattered above the waterline so once we have that selected click on ok and all of our scattering would happen above the waterline you can choose to invert this if you want and have all of them scattered right inside of water and this might also be something that might be pretty interesting and you can choose to invert that and get them scattered only on the terrain there's also a couple more other options that includes the camera calling which only renders what the camera sees and you can also choose to work with other forms of mask that exist right here within the modifier section there's only one modifier for clumping and all of this is to help with performance when working with true terrain version 5 and finally we have shading so true terrain also comes with a couple of nice shaders that you can work with in this case we can click on create terrain material and this will present us with a dialog box where we can select the multi-layer preset material type that we want to work with so for this we're going to select green hill and this is going to process and add an overall shader across our entire piece now to preview this you may need to go over to the render view for you to be able to see this in action and for our case we're going to switch over to cycles set this to gpu save our file and hit render and with that you now see that we've got an interesting terrain and of course we do have our interesting water body 
At any point in time, of course, you would like to work with any of these presets. You can simply select any of them, select the preset for the shading that you want and apply that shading preset. And just like every other thing, you can always turn on n ton of layers to get results that you want. Of course, this also has its own set of parameters that you can use and you can also play with the masking, the filters to get even more nicer looking result. And overall, you can even boost the quality of what you're working with with True Sky, as True Sky is an interesting tool that you can use to light your scene with physical sky parameters. This also comes with a couple of interesting presets that you can work with, and despite the fact that you've got access to this preset, you still have access to parameters and also some more stuff that you can use to fine tune the overall quality of your scene. This also offers options for working with clouds and also fog. And for those who like to take a look at True Terrain version 5, and possibly you like to take a look at True Sky, then links to all of these are going to be in the description, so do well to check it out. And if you just want to preview this, then there's a $1 True Terrain preview that is currently available, and if you like to get the purchase, then of course you can simply come through and grab this for yourself. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section, and of course if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.